So we're still having a discussion regarding the COVID-19 pandemic and um, its toll on our life, social, economic, political life in this country. I have with me a member of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament and member of Parliament for the South Dai constituency, the Honorable Roxen Dafiamapo. Welcome, sir. So it's been barely a week since the um, imposition of restrictions kicked in. That was passed by Parliament. President subsequent to that um, instituted a partial lockdown in parts of the country, Greater Accra and the Greater Kumasi areas. Uh, of course, members of Parliament, members of legislature are part of uh, the essential services that are exempt from all of this uh, restricted movement. First of all, what would be your I'm saying, impression so far of how the partial lockdown has gone? and how it fits into the overall frame of containing the spread of this coronavirus. Thank you very much. Um, I believe that the, uh, it's a big shock to a lot of people. That, that's my uh, preliminary observation. Um, people are not used to this sort of thing. Yeah. And um, they must have heard people speak of curfew in the 80s and uh, the, the PNDC. But, this is the reality. It's, it's hit home. People now appreciate the fact that this was how curfew looks like. But this one is more than curfew. This one is a 24-hour total lockdown. And others describe it as partial because of the fact that it is, it is not affecting the, the, the entirety of the country. But you know, Accra and Kumasi are the heartbeat of the country. So... Um, any, once these two cities are paralyzed, the country eventually is also paralyzed. And so I, I, can, I can understand. I've, I've driven around a couple of days. Um, I do not see that people are taking it serious. I still see a, a lot of vehicles on the road. Uh, I've also seen a lot of police roadblocks. But the insistence on the key reasons i.e. Uh, for purposes of purchasing basic amenities like food, i.e. for attending to nature's call, i.e. to be able to attend to a hospital, and such other things. People are giving a lot of flimsy excuses. And so I can appreciate the reason why the security officers are, are, are using high-handed means to enforce the... the the conditions of the lockdown. Aside from that, I have also gathered that um, it's affected the, the economy, the basic economy, the two economies, the microeconomy of these two metropolitan areas, to the extent that it's also affected or paralyzed the, the economy of the outliers. So, boom, areas they are affected, Adan is affected, uh, Afienya, Akuse, Akusombo, Atimpoku, Kmon, they are all because affected. Because there's an overspill of exactly. economic activity. Because you see, uh, there's an interface. Every day, people drive into Accra to do business and take business out. And so once Accra Kumasi is cut off, um, like I said, there's a paralysis of movement. So the, the microeconomy is affected. A lot of small businesses are also affected. Aside from that, our social cultural lifestyles are also drastically transformed. Now you can't even shake your brother when when you meet him. You can you can't give a shoulder the way we do it as young men. Women can't do what they do anymore. And social culturally, so we are adversely affected. People are trying to appreciate the the reality now. And religiously. Our religious practices have also been adversely affected. People can't go to church and practice their faith like they used to do. People can't travel to their mocks on a Friday afternoon to say their prayers. They have to say so uh, quietly in, in the deepest recesses of their, of their bedrooms. Yeah. And, and so the social lifestyle of our people are generally... And you know, e economics and social lifestyle are, are interwoven. Yeah. Uh, uh, one has a reflection on the yeah. other. So generally, we, we are paralyzed. And uh, the, the, the full gamut of the effect will be felt after the two weeks assessment is done. Yeah. And perhaps the, the, the president may want to extend and or review. By review, 
by way of extending for another two weeks or for a week as and when uh, the situation will demand. So we'll see what happens in two weeks' time. When, when, when you were working on the Imposition of Restrictions Act at the committee level, um, is this what you envisaged in terms of its implementation and, 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 and in force, operationally? Is this what you envisaged? Yes, if you recall, and I know you were in the House, for instance, I argue that uh, the, the good intentions of the president may not be reflective of the way and the manner the security officers who will be on the streets implementing the law. So we needed a much more clarity. You hear that even my colleague lawyers yeah. are complaining that why are they not considered as essential service providers to be exempted to enable them attend court yeah. so that in the event that there are special circumstances for which cases will have to be handled, they can, uh, clients can fall on them to avail their services. But the chief justice has set aside some courts earlier this Yes, but, but lawyers, lawyers will have to lawyers, practice No, them. lawyers are, exempt, are not exempted. So who will be, who will be, who will no, be in these cases? No, no, but when you talk of the judiciary, lawyers are not part of the judiciary. Yes, but I mean, for the practicality of that, of that measure, if you are to go to court, you need a lawyer. No, I'm a lawyer and I can tell you that courts can function without lawyers. Really? Yes. I have been in court where I, I didn't, my, my matter was not called for like two hours. The court functioned for the, for the two hours before it got to my turn. The court functioned minus a lawyer. So then there is a case for the bar to be, to, to be exempted from this? Yes, the bar is making, no, the bar is making a case. Mm -hmm. But I have argued with my colleagues that it is possible for the courts to function without lawyers. Once there is a matter before the court and the parties are available, the court is mandated to go into the matter. Mm -hmm. It is the duty of the parties to say that we want to have a lawyer represent us. Okay. Once, the, once the parties don't say that or the conditions are such that you, procuring the services of a lawyer become restrictive under the circumstances that we find ourselves. The court is mandated to, to, to go ahead with whatever they have to do. That is why, in the wisdom of the Chief Justice, he has set aside some number of courts to operate in these circumstances. And he's not the head of the Lawyers Association, he's not the president of the Ghana Bar. So he cannot make a case for it is the it is the duty of the national officers of the Ghana Bar make to case. make a case, and indeed they were aware of this bill when it was coming, and they knew that they are not being included in the class of of essential of, of essential service provider in the class of category of uh, service providers that are described as essential services. Okay. They ought to have made their case. Yeah. All right. There, okay. There's a, there, there's you know, widespread social media accounts. Um, of people who have been brutalized um, because of the enforcement of these restrictions. There's even a case where the military high command is investigating and the police are also investigating another. Why is it so difficult to have the tenets of democratic policing enforced at this point in time? I will tell you why. It is because of the individual orientation of the officers. Mm. This is not an issue for the for the commands to, to deal with. The commanders will give their directives and they, they will urge their men to follow their protocols, i.e. within the, 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 the military and the police, but they will be working together. But there are certain individual officers who, when they, when they, go, when they go onto the grounds, for, for, some, for some inordinate reasons, we want to use, apply executive force or, in other words, they will want to take the law into their own hands, even though they are the law enforcers. The law is very clear. We made provisions for breach. When somebody contravenes the terms of the lockdown, there are arrangements for you to arrange the person, investigate the matter further, and arrange the person before a court of law, and prosecute the person, and let the person defend himself in the matter. And if indeed he's convicted, then the, 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 the appropriate penalties as prescribed in, in Act 1020 will apply. Vis-a-vis -vis the provisions made in, the, or the regulations made in uh, EI uh, 64 and EI 65, recently issued by the President. But no, they are equipping people with canes, they are equipping people with hot shoes, they are equipping people with... Um, 
uh, electric cables. And these are things that are recorded to have happened under the PNDC and other military regimes. So what is the difference? So this is condemnable. It is condemnable. I, 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 am, I am out there to have condemned this act. You see, the military, I have heard the military take issue with TV3, mm -hmm. a sister, um, and, uh, uh, um, uh, another media house, for, for publishing some particular information. And I told them the military would have exercised circumspection in demanding An apology. apology from TV3 because the subsequent evidence suggests clearly that they, the happenings are feeding into the warnings that they issued. Mm. So, so the apology that he demanded and got, and the subsequent evidence that is emerging from the pockets of this, the, the two lockdown areas, it defeats the purpose. So it means we have issues with individuals amongst the security enforcement officers. So it is those individuals that ought to have been brought to book. Okay. And I'm also urging individuals that where, for good reason, you are out there and you have been brutalized, people should begin to assert their rights. You don't sue the Ghana Police Service when you are brutalized by a serving police officer in uniform under these circumstances. Sue the individual police officer okay. in his capacity as an individual. When you are brutalized by a military officer in uniform under these circumstances, and you know that the grounds for which you, are, you were found out is covered by either EI-64 or EI-65, or even the Act itself, Act 1012, you take steps and sue the person in civil action, in tort. You, you understand yeah. me? Then the officers will begin to wake up and know that when you are in uniform, it is the uniform that makes you special. When you exercise the, the coercive powers of states in a uni, as a uniform officer, your duty is to exercise those coercive powers within the remit as set out in the law. Okay. If you go outside the law, the law should be applicable to you in equal measure as you sought to apply to the person you thought that infringed the law. All right. You know? We'll take your concluding remarks okay. at this point. I want to urge all of us to be calm and to try as much as possible. Those of us who are found within the catchment areas of Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi, in other words, Metropolitan Kumasi, to try and cooperate with the, the law enforcement officers to ensure that the, the measure as imposed under the, the, the various regulations covering this activity are for purposes of securing our public safety. And therefore, we should try and cooperate so that the, 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 Commonwealth, the health of the Commonwealth of the country can be ensured. Finally, I want to say hello to my constituents yes, in South Dain, Peki, Pali, Kweve, Tongo. Uh, there's a big spillover to my, my, my constituency by the fact that because rumors of the lockdown filtered into the, the public space, a few days before it was announced on uh, Saturday, no, on Friday, Friday night, a lot of my people went back home to spend that two weeks mm -hmm. with their families. So we are making efforts. I know the assembly has provided, the local government through the assemblies have provided a few Veronica buckets. I have also made arrangements. I'm providing about 1,000 hand sanitizers, about 1,000 hand gloves, uh, I'm providing about 40 or 50 Veronica buckets in addition to what the assembly has provided. Wow. I'm also providing about 1,000 uh, um, uh, 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 face masks. I'm providing, in addition to that, I'm also providing, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, hand lotions. Yeah. So to facilitate the hand washing and all that, to be, to be dotted over all the communities and the health institutions that I have in South Dain. So. Even though we are not captured by the lockdown, the, the, the consequence is that our people have troop home, yeah. so there is pressure. And so we must also continue to observe the protocols. Um, somebody described the social distances as not social distancing, <laughs> but rather physical yeah, distancing. distancing. We should observe that. We should also observe the religious protocols not to congregate in churches where we have funerals to perform as, as, as much as possible. We should observe 
the limit of only 25 people and private buyers, all those things. You know, we are in the rural areas. Our markets, the Tongo Germany market, Kwebe market, Peking market, uh, there are arrangements that will minimize the number of people who will come to the market from next week. We I also know of the arrangement to fumigate the three markets, I think tomorrow, Saturday. But because we'll be rising tomorrow, I will not be able to attend. But we want everybody to cooperate with them so that the the welfare of the of the district of, of the people of the district and which is also co terminals to my constituency will be secured until we we are out of this present crisis. Thank you very much. Uh, the Honorable Dafia Mapo is MP for South Dai.